All right, good afternoon. It's one o'clock. Thank you for joining us today for our presentation about Ardex Flexbone Uncoupling Systems. I'm your host. My name is Aaron Chafee. I'm the Regional Sales Manager for the Western United States for Ardex. Joining us today, we have William White, who's our Field Marketing Specialist, who will be showing us practical application, as well as Mark Penine, who is our Technical Manager for Tile Systems at Ardex in Aliquippa, Pennsylvania. Also, uh, monitoring your questions and helping to provide answers is Kristen Blanchard remotely. Uh, Kristen is joining us from Northern California, and we have Ryan Willoughby with us as well, who's helping with products uh, that we're going to be putting up on stage for you once we get into the live demonstrations. So with that, we thank you for joining us, and we will begin. Thanks, Aaron. So today we're going to talk about three Flexbone uncoupling systems. We're going to also have live demonstrations after uh, some of our discussions on the products themselves. And then we're going to have some questions for you guys to ask questions and we'll answer them as the demonstrations go on, as well as at the end of the presentations. What is Flexbone technology? So as you can see in the picture, the Flexbone is a unique bone-shaped uncoupling system that offers grip lock technology. It's much different in the look, the shape, and the actual application of the product from some of the waffle-shaped products on the market. We get 50% better pull-off strength than our competitors do as well. The first product I want to talk about is our Artex UI720 Flexbone floating uncoupling membrane. 720 is the only truly 100% unbonded uncoupling mat on the market. It's ideal for difficult substrates. So if your substrate may have oil, maybe some carpet adhesive, or even paint on it, you may not have an option for bonding to that substrate. Maybe your customer doesn't want any grinding or shot blasting to take place. This is a perfect solution. It's also perfect for frequently changed floors, like boutique stores. You just roll out the mat and start installing towel. You're going to have a 50% time savings. Another great benefit of the 720 is it has excellent ventilation. So you get a you get 1000 perforations per square foot, which allows the UI 720 to go over green concrete or new concrete as we know it in the industry. As soon as you can walk on that concrete, you can roll out the 720 and install your tile. Now for the bonded application, that's our product UI740. 740 is great for residential and commercial and specifically for heavy traffic areas. You install 740 to the substrate with an approved Ardex polymer modified mortar. It's got maximum bond strength, it's great for high stress areas. Again, like I said, high traffic areas like shopping malls and airports. We also recommend the installation of large format tiles over UI740. Let's look at some demonstration. All right, good afternoon, everyone. My name is William White. I'm the field marketing specialist for the Western US. Today, we're gonna show you a live presentation of the Flexbone Uncoupling, we're going to be focusing on the UI740 or the bonded Flexbone. Now we do have the UI720 that Mark referenced. The UI720 is unique because it is 100% floating, so it is not attached to the substrate at all. Um, this one is a great one. You know, the floating Flexbone is, is a great solution when you have a problematic substrate. The 740 bonded is more like other traditional uncoupling systems. So that's the one we're actually gonna present for you today. So we have two actual, two presentations that we're gonna show you. 
So the first thing we're going to start with is actually cutting and measuring and cutting our flex bone. So we have the Arctic shears. These are great because they make quick, easy work. Mark Panay, we have a question from Wayne Oliver. What is the minimum size tile that can be installed? So for the Flexbone 720, the, um, the unbonded, it's an eight inch by eight inch tile. And for the bonded 740, it's a two inch by two inch mosaic tile. So we've cut in thank you mark for answering that question um so we've cut in our ui 740 now we're ready to install so the ui 740 has a fleece back here and we're going to install using a 5 16 v-notch trowel now the product that we're going to use to install this today is the Ardex S28. Now, this is actually the Ardex S28 in white. Um, so S28 is a rapid curing product, perfect for under, under and over uncoupling membranes, also for moisture sensitive materials. So we're just gonna go ahead and actually install. So you can see that the S28 is a semi porable material. Very, very easy to trowel. S28 being a S28 being a rapid curing product is going to allow us to have traffic and or grout over top of our set installed tile in as little as four hours. Chris, do we have any questions coming through? Not at this time, William.
I sure did put out a pull out a pin set there. <laughs> So what I like to do is I actually like to use a uh, mag float to indent the material, make sure that we get a good transfer. Mark, what is the open time of S28? So S28, unique uh, capabilities of S28 is that it has a 45 minute open time and a 75 minute pot life. But in four hours, it's completely hard and ready to go out and walk on. Very unique product in the industry, nothing like that. Thank you, Mark. Also, does directional troweling matter? So for me personally, I always practice keying into the substrate and directional troweling. You know, under an uncoupling membrane, I don't even know, you know, maybe Mark can chime in on this, but his best practices, I always directional trowel, whether it's, you know, putting down an uncoupling or putting down my tile. I agree 100%. They used to say that it wasn't as important for mosaics or maybe a four and a quarter tile, but with what we've learned uh, of all the benefits of directional troweling, I, I agree with you, William. I, I agree that that's the best way to go in all applications. Thank you. Uh, one more question from Wayne Oliver. He wants to confirm that all self-leveling underlayments and any other surface prep is to be done below flex bone. That's a great point. Exactly. So per the TCNA handbook, our substrate needs to meet the minimum requirements for the size of the tile that we'll be installing over top of it. So regardless of what kind of tile backer you're using, your substrate, if your tiles are bigger than 15 inches, must be an eighth inch and 10 feet. Now, if your tiles are less than 15 inches, it's a quarter inch and 10 feet. So that's regardless of whatever type of substrate you're going to be or, or back or you're going to be attached to the tile to you always want your substrate to to meet that minimum standard thank you william uh pittsburgh asks is there a lot of curling with the mat um well you can see here i just pressed it in aaron when I'm, it's just laying down there now one thing i did want to do is pull back and do a nice little glue check you know we're getting really good transfer of our material here so we'll and that's where pressing it in that's why i like to use the magnesium flow it really does press it in well so that's going to be it for the 740 installation what we're actually going to do is we're going to jump into the Flexbone heat presentation and then demonstration. And then we're going to give this a, a little bit of opportunity to set. And we're going to go ahead and install some tile on top of it so you can see the characteristics of S28 and the one pass fill that Artex Flexbone provides. Okay, thanks, William. So let's go into the Flexbone heat. Um, Flexbone heat is a combination of products which begins with the mat itself, the flexbone uncoupling mat. We also have a power module. We have our flexbone heat wires, which come in 15 sizes for 120 volts and 22 sizes for the 240 volts, a total of 37 wires altogether for your choices. 
We have three thermostat options. We have a Wi-Fi programmable. We also have a touch programmable and the basic model of a non-programmable available. Here's a, uh, a chart of the different offerings in both the 120 volt compared to 240 volt. As you will notice that once you reach 150.5 square feet for the 120 volt, you must move into the 240 volt for longer wire options. When flexbone heat is encapsulated with an Ardex self-leveling underlayment, other floor coverings can be installed over the flexbone heating system. As an example, wood, LVT, or even carpet. Always consult with the flooring manufacturer to make sure their product is approved to be installed over electric in-floor heating. That's the most important point. Another big advantage of the flexbone heat is its flatness. There's virtually no memory. Installing a self-leveling product to encapsulate the wires offers a layer of protection also. The installer doesn't have to worry about damaging the wires during the installation. As an ex-installer, I know the benefits of that because especially when you're doing a large installation, maybe you're doing a house that has an entranceway, hallway, kitchen, um, that's all gonna receive in-floor heating wires. The problem is, you're going to be walking down that hall over those wires. You're going to be dragging buckets and tools, and you always have the possibility of damaging those wires. If you encapsulate them with a self-leveling product, the next day you have no worries. You can walk all over that floor, carry your tools in, and have peace of mind that those wires are safe and signed underneath that self-leveling product. Another great advantage of the um, Ardex Flexbone heat wires themselves is the hot and cold lead wire is the same wire as the cable that you're installing. There's no need to cut the mat for that bulky hot cold junction that some of our competitors have. For someone, again, that's installed these types of wires before, they'll understand that. They have to use a hot glue gun, they'll have to cut the mat, bury that junction and then when they go to install their mortar make sure it doesn't lift the towel in a corner or something like that causing issues there's minimum contact areas between the wires and the mat less air has to be heated which equates to less energy used also, the unique heat lock elevations allow the wire to be fully encapsulated with the mortar. Again, this allows all of the energy to go to the mortar and then the tile, which is going to heat your floor at its warmest capability with less energy. The Ardex system is a single source 100% solution. We offer two options for installing your wires. We have a primary heating option, which is the main option, and those your wires are gonna be installed at 3.88 inches apart with two flex bone stars in between. Or if you just wanna take the chill off your tile, you're not worried about really warming the room, you can use the comfort heating spacing, which is 5.82 inches apart. This picture really demonstrates the different shape of our mat compared to our competitors, the structure. So we have less air in our mat, which means less air to heat Again, it's all about saving energy and producing the warmest product at the end of the day. Here's a nice graph showing the thermal imaging 
of the Flexbone heat compared to our competitor. We have better output using less energy, 7 to 18% less wire length, which equals 11% less wattage per square foot. We have two approved self-leveling products to install over to Flexbone heat wires. For tile installations, your options are liquid backer board or Artex K60. For other floor coverings like LVT, wood, or vinyl, we recommend using the Artex K60. Again, these are our three options for our thermostat, as well as the power module. You will not need the power module in all situations, only if you're going to have multiple wires where you need to offset the amount of wattage that's going to the thermostat, you can hook up the power module that will be able to use one thermostat for a room that has many wires, uh, so it'd be a very large room. We also have some accessories as options. You can use the UD146 edge insulation strip to go around the perimeter of the room, up against your walls and any abutments. This will allow for that quarter inch gap that you must leave as expansion around the room. It's not mandatory for the Flexbone heat and the Flexbone 740 bonded it is mandatory for this, the unbonded floating UI720. Uh, also, both the UI740 and the Flexbone heat, when the seams are addressed with the Artex SK175 seam tape, those uncoupling masks become waterproof. And all you have to do is treat the seam with the SK175 seam tape, as well as the change of plane from the floor to the wall with the same tape. We have flexbone shears for easy cutting, and we have a movement joint tape, the UD156. When you have an expansion joint, you have to honor that expansion joint up through the assembly, which includes the mat itself. So the UI, the UD156 tape really just covers that joint so your mortar doesn't get down in between it. Christian, any questions? Thank you, Mark, we do. Does Flexbona help with deflection problems, specifically L over 360 and L over 720? Great question, no. Uncoupling mats do not make a floor less deflective. They only handle shear stress uh, from side to side. That is an awesome question, though. Any okay. other questions? Yeah, one question just came in from Anonymous. Can I use Flexbone heat under tile in a shower pan? Yes, yeah, so we have a couple options for Flexbone heat in showers. We do not want to run our wire through a curb. So if you have a curbless shower, you are able to run the same wire from the bathroom floor into the shower pan that's run off one thermostat. If you have a curb, you must use a separate wire with a separate thermostat for the shower and a separate wire with a separate thermostat for the bathroom floor. Thank you. A few more questions here. One from Eric. When applying Flexbone to the substrate to minimize curling, would you suggest adding water at the higher ratio or lower ratio of mixing recommendations printed on the bag? Yeah, so um, we always recommend mixing our mortars to the high water ratio for installing any of our Flexbone products, whether it's the Flexbone heat or the UI740. Um, also, our product has very little memory. 
but if you do happen to get a curl at the end, if you need to set a box of tile on the, the cut end for you know 15 to 20 minutes, that typically does it. But it's not ever really a major issue with the Flexbone products. They have very little memory. Thank you, Mark. Uh, Wayne Oliver asked if saw cuts and cold joints in the slabs also must be honored up through the mat. Not saw cuts, but isolation joints. Um, Construction joints, floor joints. Also uh, expansion joints and um, anywhere where there's two separate pores together that are not connected with um, some type of um, metal, um, you know, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, you know, uh, rebar, then you must honor it up through. But we could definitely go over saw cuts. We can go over control joints. For the same question, must that be honored up through the tile installation as well, or only through the mat? All the way up through. So it has to go through the mat as well as the tile application. And of course, you want to install a flexible sealant. Our recommendation is the Ardex SX silicone. Yes, and I would add in that situation where we're observing a cold joint all the way up through, we actually have um, a movement tape that is applied over top of that joint so we don't fill it with mortar and or grout or anything. And then we line that up through our tile. And then like Mark said, put a flexible sealant like Ardex SX in that joint. So we're going to go ahead and, and jump into the Ardex Flexbone heat system. Now the Ardex Flexbone heat system, it consists of three parts. You've got your mat, you've got your stat, you've got your wire. So we're going to go through the installation of these materials and we're going to talk about all of the components so that we can know how to properly install these. So here we've mocked up a very simple bathroom installation. We've already got our mat down. We've got our wire on site. Now the first thing that we're going to do when we open up our wire is we're going to grab our meter and we're going to uncoil this wire. This is the very first thing that we're going to do. We have this sticker and it tells us that we want to be at 98.93 ohms. So what we're going to do with this sticker is we're actually going to peel it off and we're going to stick it right here on our paperwork and then we tape this paperwork to the wall. Well, that's the French version. We're not going to do the French version. We'll stick with the English version for us. So we're actually going to stick the sticker right on there and then we're going to write down what our measurements are. So this is pretty easy. So we're going to write the factory resistance. Ryan, could you throw me a pen real quick? Thank you, sir. So our factory resistance here is going to read 98.93. Okay, that's right off the sticker. Now to measure, this is a beauty of the Ardex system is you don't need an expensive multimeter. All you need is a, a or a, a, what do they call them? The megometer or whatever they are, you know, $600. You don't need that. All you need is a regular multimeter, turn it to 200 ohm, and then we're simply going to connect to our two wires. Hmm. Oh, I pulled it off. Well, my alligator clips must be not working for us here. I am not 
excuse me for a sec, guys. I think my multimeters, oh, it's on hold. There we go. <laughs> so my meter has a hold function and it was actually locked on the on the zero reading. That's why I wasn't getting anything. So I'm just going to hold to these two wires and it doesn't matter either direction. And we're just going to measure and read what this says over here. So 98.8. So we're simply going to write that down 98.8. So that's the very, very first thing that we're going to do. Now, one thing I'd like to point out is that you do get one thermostat comes with the wire. You get another thermostat probe that comes with the uh, with the thermostat. So we do provide two. I do highly recommend installing both of them into the floor. Now for this installation, we have used the Ardex um, perimeter isolation foam all the way around our perimeter. I like to do that because what it does is it allows for our entire installation. We're actually going to pre-fill this with liquid backer board, so it provides an expansion joint all the way around our perimeter. Mark, why we were on that subject, anonymous has asked the question if UD 146 is not mandatory, then is it considered overkill if he's installing a heat membrane for waterproofing in a bathroom? Actually, I would not include it for waterproofing because you have to use the SK 175 tape to do the change of plane from the floor to the wall to waterproof the edges. So in a waterproofing application, I would not recommend using the UD-146. Thank you. Another question from Anonymous. When installing the heat cables, how many feet can I install before having to make a return? Uh -huh. So, so uh, I'll take that question, Mark, if you yeah. don't mind. So before I... Uh, so to answer that question, I haven't began running my wire yet, but we don't have that putting a kink in the wire or, or putting a, a, I guess, a strain relief in the wire. We don't have that minimum requirement. So for our installation, once we begin our wire, we can actually just lay it in and run the entire length of wire. We don't have a, a requirement to put a kink in that wire. One thing I'd like to point out is our cold lead junction here. So from this point forward, the wire is going to be hot. From this point forward, the wire is cold. And it's actually printed right here on the wire as well. It says cold. So we can run this. This, this wire is three meters long. So we can run this all the way around it. Say if the thermostat was over by the toilet, we could lace that wire along the edge. It is not hot. So we can run that anywhere we need to. And this is the part that would get pulled up into the wall. Now, what I like to point out about this junction box is a lot of the other flooring systems have these cold lead junctions. And these can be difficult because you have to carve out the floor, you have to carve out the mat to get this to sit flat because it's actually thicker than the, than the mat is. So with ours, it is continuous. Now, I recommend you leave this sticker on there because some inspectors, if they come to look at the floor heat, they're used to seeing this box. And if they don't see it on the floor, they think that you've put it in the wall, which you would not want to do. Leave this sticker on until you're ready to cover up everything. So we're ready to begin our wire installation. And it actually goes really easy. I'm able just to press it right into my hand. Now, can you see the little dots here? Do those show up for you guys on the screen? These little dots underneath the wire, as I run the wire, what they do is they actually elevate it. So these are thermal elevation dots, and they keep that wire up above the substrate so that the substrate, if you're direct on concrete, doesn't suck the heat down. So the thermal break is built into our system.
this is where you can see that our system has this nice continuous radius as we come around. It's just this beautiful radius because wires don't like to have sharp bends in them. That actually creates resistance in the wire. So with our system, just makes that nice radius. Now we do have that larger spacing that we can go to the wider spacing. That is that is just like a, a comfort heating, not our standard spacing. Um, it's not going to get quite as hot. So we're here in the Pacific Northwest. We like our floors nice and warm. So we're going to stick with our standard spacing. There's a few more questions here while you're installing that, William. Uh, Jordan has asked that he has had flex bone curl at the ends of the roll, and could he use a hand stapler at the end? It's uh, a great question. Now, if you did run into that situation where you had a little bit of curl, you know, it could be that, you know, your thin set was maybe not mixed quite right or getting towards the end of the bucket, whatever happens, please do not staple, screw, or fasten the uncoupling down because now you've actually just ruined the uncoupling nature of an uncoupling mat. If you get where you've got a little curl, here we didn't, it didn't curl on us at all, but if that happened, you could simply just take a box of tile and put it there, or a single tile a lot of times will just hold that down to eliminate any curl. Thank you, William. Um, one more question we as a caveat we're not going to get into very deep electrical questions but on the surface a question here is do we need a dedicated circuit for flexbone that's a great question and yes we we always require a dedicated circuit for our floor heating um, that should be installed by a licensed electrician inspected by your you know local municipality but yes, we always want a dedicated circuit in the wall. And so I'll talk about that when we come to, you know, finishing up our installation. Thank you, William. One last question from Wayne Oliver. He is asking about the space tolerances for vanities, plumbing, HVAC vents, toilets, etc. That's a great question. Thank you for bringing that up. So here we have a vanity. The toe kick's already been installed. I like to heat. I keep that at about two inches right here. Now on our other side where we're at the wall, I like to keep a six to eight inch spacing away from the wall. Now where that's really handy is if I got to the end of the wire and I had some extra wire that I needed to eat up, I could run that down this space to eat up a little bit of extra wire. And the theory behind that is when I'm standing next to the wall, even if I'm standing there, my feet are out here. So I wouldn't even feel that this area is not heated. So that's why I always figure six to eight inches as a buffer, kind of depending. So here our doorways there, I kept it at six inches, but at the toe kick, I did two inches. Now, when we come to do our, our toilet flange, which is where we're at right now, I kept us, we want to be eight inches from the center of the toilet flange and eight inches to the front. So speaking of the toilet flange, because we're going to be self-leveling, I'm going to go ahead and do my spray foam around our toilet flange so that we can do our pre-fill with LBB. Now, I like to use spray foam in that application because it keeps it really easy um, to seal that up. And that way I don't get any self leveler when I go to apply the, the pre fill to fill this up. So another advantage that I like with the flex bone wire, you'll notice that even if I pull this off, it doesn't coil up. So the wire, I can actually bend it and make it take a shape if I want. And with the Flexbone heat mat, if I need to, I can even change directions. 
So again, eight inches away from our center of our drain. And that finishes up our wire installation. Chris, any other questions? Not yet. Okay. So our wire is down. Now we're ready to make our second test. So again, I'm going to grab my paperwork. I'm going to come over here to my junction box. Now let's talk about the junction box for just a moment. So here we have what's called a four square box. And I realize that we're tile guys, tile setters. We're not electricians. Some of you may be, you know, pretty handy around electrical, but I would highly recommend that you have a licensed electrician manage this portion of it and do all the final connections. But if you have an opportunity to talk to the electrician or talk to the general contractor, request a four square box and then have them install a mud ring. So a mud ring, our thermostat will mount to that, but it gives us plenty of space inside this box. Now we do have two conduits coming down. One is going to be for the wire. The other one is going to be for our two temperature probes. Remember, one comes with the wire and one comes with the thermostat. So we have two temperature probes and we're going to install both of them into the floor. When we do that, we're just going to run them out between two wires. So I could run it here or I could run it out here and then I just stagger both probes and put them in the floor. Now that our wire is installed, we're going to set it to 200 again. And then we're simply going to test our wire one more time just to make sure there was no damages. 98.89. It's jumping. We're going to go 98.8. So again, I go here. We have our second resistance test, 98.8. Now we're going to do a final resistance test after we install our tile. OK, so we're actually going to do. We're going to apply uh, Ardex liquid backer board as a prefill in this installation. So for that, we're just going to use the Ardex smoother and apply it directly on there. The nice thing about this is that a self leveling cement will encapsulate that wire and actually transmit that heat more effectively than a thin set. So the system will work better if it's self-leveled. Also, it protects the wire from being possibly damaged. Thank you, Ryan. As you pour that, William, I have a question from Anonymous. Should the area that you put the sensor wires in be installed in a comfort spread spacing so the sensors aren't very near the heat wire? So we want the wire. That's a great question and thank you for that. So we want the wire before the self leveling gets there. We just want it centered between two of the hot wires. So it would always go on the hot side. Aaron, you can go here. So this wire is cold. Remember it shows our cold. So we would want our probe somewhere up in this neighborhood as long as we're past our wire or even possibly here. Now the one thing we don't want to do with our with our temperature wire is cross over right here. We wouldn't want to bring it in and cross over our hot wire. So we always would just want to run it down the middle of two hot wires. Does that answer that question? Yes, William, thank you.
So when we pre-fill, we're just going, keep it right there, Aaron, nice and close. We're just going tight across the top of the Flexbone heat mat. Just like that. So it's just a barely a skim across it. And that will finish our heat installation. Chris, any questions coming in so far? Yes, from Jordan. Inspectors have told me that they do not like the low voltage thermometer wires going inside the box with high voltage wires. Can the thermometer wires be run through the mud ring? So they're going to have to, so again, this is getting into that hardcore electrical stuff where we need to have the certified electrician manage this piece of it. So inside the electrical junction box, that's why we have two conduits because we, we can't run our thermostat wire and our high voltage wire in the same conduit, but ultimately they're going to connect to the back of the thermostat within the same junction box. So at some point, they're both going to be in the same area. Um, I don't know that there's any real way around that other than if it is one of the blue plastic boxes, there is a, a orange divider that you can slide into the middle of the junction box and basically break it into two junction boxes, one for the high voltage side and one for the low voltage side. So that is a possibility if they're using the four square blue plastic boxes. Thank you, William. From yeah. Anonymous, can the two sensors be next to each other? Yes, absolutely. I normally run them right next to each other and put them in. That way it, it just keeps it nice and easy. Now, one thing I didn't, I forgot to mention was your best friend when doing a heat installation, hot glue gun. I always have one in my bag, so I have this little bag set up. Anytime I'm doing a heat installation, everything that I need is in that bag. My ohm meter is in there and my hot glue gun. So I use the hot glue gun to glue down any wire that happens to float up or those thermostat wires. I simply can glue them down and hold them into place because they're a much smaller wire, so they don't lock into the Flexbone heat mat quite as easy. One more question here, William, from Wayne Oliver. Uh, he's noting that we're pouring liquid backer board on top of the flex bone. Um, so he's confused if the floor prep needs to be done below the flex bone still. So yeah, that's a that's a great question. And, and so to answer that, we always want to do our floor prep prior to. So what we're doing with the liquid backer board is pre-filling the mat, protecting the wire, and actually allowing the wire to run more efficiently because thinset has a lot of air in it and a self leveler is a very dense cement. So it's gonna transmit that heat better and protect that wire from any possible damage while we're installing the tile or before we even get back to install the tile, say the electrician comes in and puts his ladder on top of it, it's gonna protect that. Um, your floor prep should always be done in accordance to the tile that you're installing to meet those minimum standards lined out per the TCNA handbook. Any other questions? Not at this time, William. All right. So a couple of things I wanted to cover with you. So if I wanted to waterproof either one of these installations, the Flexbone Heat or the Flexbone UI740, I can use the Artix SK175 banding. Now Artix SK175 banding is different than SK Mesh. So this is actually a waterproof fabric and I can install it right over top of my seam. And I would do that simply with a little bit of thin set. Now this would make a waterproof installation. This is perfect for somebody that's maybe had a water leak, maybe in a utility room or bathroom, something like that. So we install it with thin set. And we simply just press it into place.
Now, I wanted to show you guys another great feature of FlexBone, and that's the ability to fill in one pass. So you guys see how easily that fills. I don't have to go back over that. It filled in every valley and also it interconnects underneath the tile. All of our tile is going to be connected together with a bed of mortar. So we're here, we're using the Artex S28, which happens to be one of my favorite mortars. It's actually what I installed all the floors in my house with. This is our new version that is white, which I really like the white version. So I have all Calcutta floors in my house and I installed it with the gray Art XS 28. So here we have an 18 by 18 inch tile. So with very little pressure, and this is the beauty of Artex S28, is that amazing coverage that we have there. So, you know, depending on the substrate, depending on the tile, there are times where we may not even have to back butter. Here, this is an 18 by 18 inch tile. I would always back butter something that large, but S28, depending on the tile and depending on the application, you may not even need to back butter. We have some questions here, William, from Eric. Can you cut the FlexBone heat mat to be able to embed the wire at the end flush with the top of the mat? Uh, the thermocouple at the end. I think that may be where the question's coming from. Correct. Uh, if we had to, um, you could simply just carve out a little spot right there and embed it down in. That, that'd be perfect. A fifth set question here, how does S28 compare to X5 in cost as well as workability performance? Uh, so the performance is, is going to blow away X5. X5, number one selling thin set without a doubt. It's an amazing everyday workhorse, get it done. It's, it's a, it qualifies as a medium bed or LHT mortar. It can do just about everything. What makes S28 different? S28 actually has our self-drying chemistry in it. So that self-drying chemistry where I'm over, you know, a piece of plastic and a, even a larger format tile, we can use it with our gauged porcelain tile and air doesn't have to get to the middle of the tile. The mortar itself is self-drying, which is going to, no matter what, dry that mortar and achieve our proper bond strength. So that's a really unique characteristic to Artex S28. So it is a little more expensive than, than an X5, but it also is a high yield product. We're 103, I believe 103 square feet or 105 square feet per bag with a quarter by quarter notch trowel. You know, X5 gets about 80. So while it is a little more expensive, you also get a little more in the bag. So it has all Microtech technology which is our proprietary blend of, of fibers and polymers. Any other questions as we're wrapping up? One more question, William. Uh, we've touched on this previously, but maybe we should go back and clarify. Um, from Wayne Oliver, regarding deflection and natural stone to hit L over 720, is a double layer of plywood still required underneath a flex bone? Absolutely. So that's a great question. And at any time we're talking about deflection and specifically with stone installations, we always want to have, per the TCNA handbook, we always want to have two layers of plywood. 
and our substrate to meet deflection, whether we're talking ceramic, porcelain, natural stone, our substrate has to meet the minimum deflection without any, you know, a backer board, an uncoupling, does nothing to actually, you know, reduce deflection from a floor. So our, our structure, our assembly has to be strong enough for the tile installation. What the uncoupling does is it prevents any possible cracks in the substrate, like if we're on concrete, from transferring up into our tile work. I hope that answers the question for him. It did, thank you. There's no questions at this time, Lynn. Awesome. Well, that's the do it for our presentation. Um, I hope that you guys found this helpful and useful and that you'll join us as we do more and more of these live training events for you. You know, please feel free to drop us a comment if you have something that you would personally like to see. And of course, if there's, um, you know, any questions that you have, please reach out to your, you know, local tile and stone sales professional, or you can always reach Ardex Technical Services and we'll put their contact up in just a second. Thank you. Everyone have a wonderful weekend and stay safe.